Hi, this screencast is going to walk through administering web form settings, options, and behaviors. I started off on the main page, but I'm going to move over to the settings tab. Now, everything is customizable and available to you. The, the web form module ships with a reasonable default, so you don't need to start tweaking these settings until you really need to, but it gives you def access to all the default messages and behaviors that you want to do. The labels. Well, I'll show you behaviors. So you can actually disable the back button on all forms. You can disable client-side validation for all forms. Um, you can also pass custom, you can define custom CSS classes that are applicable to your forms. You can define custom button classes. Drupal Core doesn't ship with a lot of button classes, but if you're using a theme like Bootstrap, you can go in here and start defining, you know, button dash dash primary, and now that's available for your submit buttons for your forms, or button button dash dash reset, and, and get into some really interesting styles for your buttons on your, your forms. And then we're also going over to wizard settings, where you have control over the labeling of the back previous and next buttons. Same thing with previews. I'm going to keep showing. These are getting pretty familiar. Confirmation message. You're not controlling any settings, but you're controlling the language. And now we get into, you also get a lot of fine grain element controls. You can decide what tags are supported by, there's a custom HTML editor that you use for when you're administering forms. That's what you're seeing up here. And you can decide what HTML tags. Generally, it's pretty permissive. It just tries to prevent cross-site script injection. Um, you get into your wrapper classes for your elements, your default classes. You can also control the layout of default descriptions. This is an API key to do geolocations. And then you get into controlling what elements are available across your entire site. If you need to limit your users to not have file uploads, you can scroll down and uncheck the file upload element. Now we're getting into the file upload element where you can allow people to upload public files to the public system. This is not recommended. This links off to the PSA from Drupal to really the best way to handle file uploads is to use a private file system. You can define upload limits and now we're getting into the extension supported for media type specific file uploads. So you could say what video file formats are supported when someone's embedding uploading videos and they can even upload videos directly from their mobile device and it opens up their video camera. Now you get into fine grain tunes of the default display modes. When a form is submitted and the value is placed into an email, you can control how it's going to look. For example, for a multiple value fields, you can say whether you want the values delimited by comma, semicolon, and, or, or a list. I'm not going to go in, into every little element here. We're getting into the email confirmations, and you can control those default templates. And then you get into fine grain control over your export default export settings. If you always want your users to export a CSV, you can tweak that or comma delimited. It's a lot to digest. This is an admin setting for batch. Generally 500 is a good size for exporting submissions. If you run into performance issues like memory, you hit memory limits, you can lower the batch size and it'll reduce the amount of memory used when you're exporting. All the forms support this test tab, which will generate test data, and you actually have control over that test data, and you can go in here and edit the YAML driving it. These are just an array of values used when someone goes to test the color element. These are the three colors that are available. These are the HTML if some text. You can actually replace HTML if some with real text. Uh, you can also get very specific to different element types. So for first name and last name, I'm using the Beatles. Then the final two things are you can control some user interface aspects of this. You can actually turn off these videos that you're watching right now. They're open in a dialog. You can also have them go externally linked to YouTube or hide them. You can disable the dialogs across the whole application if you feel that if you have a heavy usage in mobile, you probably don't need the dialogs. You can also disable the HTML editor if you're Mainly developers building the form and you want full control over the markup, disabling the HTML editor is a good option to go. And this last option is to, all the libraries are loaded from a CDN by default until you install them. And there are warnings about that because it's not recommended to go live with a CDN. And you can check this off to continue to support a CDN. It's a lot of settings to digest. You don't have to tweak every one when you first install the module. I'm going to move on to walk through this tab. It will take a, a few more minutes, but... The web form module ships with default options for select menus, and this gives you an admin UI to control them and adjust them. So these are the country codes. And actually what's interesting is this is a pulled from Drupal core 
all the available country codes and you can go and customize this list. It also provides a source mode. It's a lot of options. So you can go in and just hand type out the options or people can share snippets and cut and paste those. Moving back up, you can see a bunch of options. There's a lot of options available. You have full control over this. You can delete the options. They're just available to your elements. Moving on to elements. These are three tabs to just show you the plugins that you have installed and available. This is showing you all the web form elements available uh, and just the metadata around it. I actually use it to kind of track the class hierarchy, what properties are available, who's providing it. I'll click through to one. Let me see if I can find one that's a good one. I'm going to go over to the date and you can actually also test these elements in a dedicated admin UI. This is not a form, this is just the element being set up. And we can go in, we can set some default values and we can hit test. And we can see what's getting generated and look at the actual source code and even the final render array that's being sent to Drupal's theme layer. And by the way, you're actually seeing these are the default HTML tags that are allowed being passed to Drupal's uh, theme layer and processor. Moving on, this is the, one of the more complex um, listing pages. If I go over to settings, you also just for clarity, you get to be able to see all the handlers available and some information on who's providing them. Cardinality just controls if the handler can be added more than once to a page. And some description, exporters are used to export the data and it shows you what exporters are available. Third party settings, which actually does lead to add-ons, but I've enabled the Honeypot module and the Web4 module submit supports Honeypot integration and this is the ability to apply Honeypots to all your forms at an admin level. You can check this off and all your forms will have Honeypots or you can go into your individual forms if these are unchecked and set the Honeypots up. And this add-on tabs also guide you to these modules that are third party. They, they provide third party settings. This is how Core kind of phrases it when a module is implementing additional features to another module. It's a third party setting and you can see that I've listed the Honeypot module right here. So this is a good overview of all the settings that are available. You don't need to start customizing everything immediately. You can gradually customize things as needed. A final call out is this expand all and collapse all really helps. Generally I collapse everything and go through and only adjust the settings I need. I hope this helps get you started administering your web form installation. Thank you.